everyone. Welcome to America on Trial. My name is Adam Lamparello. I'm an attorney and a law professor. And with me today, I have Jeff Teichert, uh, an assistant attorney general for the state of Utah. Although I will say his opinions on this show do not represent those of the attorney general. And tonight we are here to discuss a very exciting topic, and that is the midterm elections. Will the Republicans take over the House? Will they take over the Senate? And if so, what will that mean for the parties in Washington and Trump in 2024? Jeff, welcome to the show. I want to start with you. Give me your prediction. What do you think is going to happen in the midterm elections? Are the Republicans going to take over the House or the Senate? Well, let's see. We've got, uh, what, three, four, three months until the election, which they say is an eternity in politics, uh, maybe four months. Uh, so, so. Anything could happen, but this is my prediction at this time. I think it's a wave election. I think that the country is going to want to... Every midterm election, particularly in the first term of a president, is a referendum on the president, and Americans do not like this president. He has got, like, what, a 26% approval rating or something like that. It's the lowest in history. Um, and they don't like him for good reason. He bungled the Afghanistan withdrawal. He, he Gas prices have never been higher. Um, you know, we've got uh, runaway inflation. And uh, now the Fed is stepping in to, uh, to raise interest rates to rein that in, which is going to cause us to go into recession. So uh, I, I think that people are fed up with Joe Biden. I think they're going to give him a huge black eye uh, in November and uh, frankly can't wait to see it. All right. Well, I appreciate that, but this is America on trial. So I want people to hear honest, straightforward opinions. And I have, I have a few views here that I think uh, are really relevant to these elections. And let's start with the state of Pennsylvania. We have Dr. Mehmet Oz, who is running against John Fetterman. Now, we know John Fetterman just had a stroke and uh, is struggling at this moment. And, of course, we wish him the best. We also know Dr. Oz has seemed out of touch with the American people. And as such, uh, Fetterman, a Democrat, is leading the race. Also, in the state of Georgia, we have Herschel Walker against Raphael Warnock. And it seems at this point that Walker has really not run a very effective campaign. So the risk is that Georgia and Pennsylvania are going to go Democrat, which is going to keep the Senate in the Democrats' hands. Uh, what do you think about that and the quality of the Republican candidates thus far? Well, I, I've wondered about the quality of the Republican candidates for several election cycles. Now, I have to say, I mean... I have mixed feelings about uh, Trump's political future, for example, but I also have never seen uh, media so in the tank against an individual candidate as they were uh, when Biden was elected. So I, I think Republican candidates, we, we could recruit better ones, but they tend to get short shrift from the media as well. So I think that's also a factor. Well, I would agree with you about media bias, but I think there's something here, the elephant in the room that we're not talking about, and that is the Supreme Court's decision in Dobbs, in which Justice Alito, on behalf of a five-member majority with Justice Roberts concurring, held that uh, overruled Roe versus Wade. So now we have this sentiment in the country that women's rights are at stake, namely the right of women to seek abortions. And that apparently is driving voters in Pennsylvania, Georgia, Ohio, and elsewhere. So how do you think the Supreme Court's decision in the abortion case and also in the Second Amendment case in which they invalidated a New York law that sought to curtail uh, gun possession, how do you think that's going to affect the midterm elections? Well, that's an interesting question. Uh, because typically, although every American president since at least Dwight Eisenhower has said that their most important role uh, is in appointing individual justices to the United States Supreme Court, uh, I think, by the way, that's because those justices will serve 20, 30, 40 years on the court and make a long make a long term impact. Uh, so, so I think that's interesting, but 
Americans have not typically voted for Supreme Court justices uh, in elections. And I think they had a, a very uh, prominent opportunity to do that uh, when the Republicans were holding up the nomination of uh, the current attorney general to, uh, to be Merrick Garland to be on the Supreme Court. Uh, I, although I think a lot of Americans thought that was unfair, uh, including me, um, I also do not believe that that Americans are going to vote based on Supreme Court justices. Well, that's a really good point. It reminds me of 1992 when uh, George H.W. Bush was uh, in a campaign against Bill Clinton. And Bill Clinton famously said, it's the economy, stupid, because the economy was not doing well at this time, at that time. And we know right now inflation is high. Gas prices are high. The American people are really struggling. But we also know that there's this attention to social issues like abortion, like immigration. So what do you think is going to win out? Is it going to be the same as Clinton said, it's the economy stupid? Or do you think social issues are going to have an influence such that the Democrats retain either the House or the Senate? Well, compared to now, 1992's economy is the good old days. But uh, I, uh, I think we've got, we've got a, a big decision to make. I think Americans tend to vote their pocketbooks first and foremost. So if the economy is humming along at a good rate, Americans will look to foreign policy issues and uh, social issues uh, to, to break any tie. But when the economy is flat on its back, Americans tend to punish the people in power. And right now, the Democrats control both houses of Congress and the White House, and they've made a royal mess of it. I mean, um, Joe Biden, I think, has the worst economy since Jimmy Carter. And unlike Jimmy Carter, Jimmy Carter, I think, was a was fundamentally the victim of, of a lot of forces that he didn't personally uh, put in motion. I mean, he didn't create the OPEC oil embargo, uh, but he had to deal with it and he dealt with it poorly and the American people punished him for it. The, the price of gas right now, if you wanna know whose fault it is, look no further than the president of the United States. What does he do the first thing when he gets in office? He cancels the Keystone Pipeline. He cancels uh, lease renewals um, for oil and gas on, on the public lands. Now people say, oh yeah, but a lot of those leases still haven't even run out. Not the point. The point is that Americans don't invest in the domestic oil business if they think the rug is gonna be pulled out from under them. And so a lot of that capital has gone overseas and now we are, uh, you know, we are at the, the mercy of Russia and Iran and a bunch of other uh, countries with little tin pot dictators. Um, it's a bad situation and you, and Joe Biden uh, is largely responsible for that. All right, well, Jeff, I appreciate that perspective. But we have to get to the second elephant in the room. And that person's name is Donald J. Trump. This isn't just Republicans against Democrats. Donald Trump is the leader of the Republican Party. And look, under his leadership, African-American and Hispanic employment rate was at an all-time low. The economy was fantastic. However, Trump, as we know, was known to make many statements on social media that alienated, for example, suburban women. And as the face of the Republican Party, Trump may have an impact on whether the Republicans take over the House or the Senate. What do you think Trump's effect will be, positive or negative for the Republicans? Because, you know, if you want my honest opinion, as much as people might not like Joe Biden, they might like him better than Trump or Trump supported candidates. What do you think? I think right now Trump beats Biden. Now that could change in the next two years. Uh, anything can happen in politics. I, I will say this about Trump. He would not be my first choice in the, the next presidential election because even though I think he did a good job on the economy and, and uh, 
you know, I think had a lot of achievements, a genuine achievements as president. Uh, he was a divisive figure. I recently reread portions of The Art of the Deal, uh, his book that I think it was back in the 80s or early 90s that he published that. But he made the comment in there that, you know, being this young businessman in New York City back in the day, he said, uh, all publicity is good publicity. And so, you know, he became a lightning rod for criticism and uh, attack ads and whatever. And, uh, you know, the, the media largely made Donald Trump president, not because he was uh, who they wanted, but he was good television. You know? All right. Well, let's let's for a second forget about Trump. Let's assume that Trump isn't going to have the impact that people think he does. Let's talk about Governor Abbott in Texas, who is busing migrants to liberal states. Let's talk about Governor DeSantis, who just bust migrants to Martha's Vineyard. So you have also Senator Lindsey Graham proposing at the federal level a ban on abortion after 15 weeks. So if we look apart from Trump and the choices Republicans are making right now regarding Abbott, DeSantis, what does that say for their chances? Is it helping them or is it hurting them? Well, I'm not a fan of these kinds of political stunts. I want to see someone come in with, with a real policy, and I, I understand why they're doing this, but it, it feeds on the animosity of people toward illegal immigrants. And it, at the end of the day, is it really going to make a difference in, in American life? Not, not, not much. I, well, you I, know what uh, I think, Jeff, and I don't mean to interrupt you, but here's, here's my opinion, and you can disagree with me and explain to me why I'm wrong. I think the American public is not frustrated with Democrats or Republicans per se. I think they're frustrated with all politicians and the elitists that Donald, that Donald Trump called the swamp in Washington. And that is the problem, that we don't have leaders today. So ultimately, whether we elect Democrats or Republicans, nothing much is going to change. I think we need a fundamental change in politics whereby the average person, the working person, has more of a voice in politics. What do you think about that? Well, I, I don't think that particular idea is going to have much effect on the midterm elections, but I do think uh, it's an important issue. And frankly, when Trump was running for office the first time, I thought what we needed was another Teddy Roosevelt, someone who would come in and break up the entrenched interests on Wall Street. And, uh, you know, and he talked a good game on that, but then he came in and didn't really do anything about it. And I have to wonder if he didn't do anything about it because he couldn't. Because, I mean, it's funny, he paid for his own campaign so auspiciously he didn't owe nobody nothing. But uh, a lot of people were owed, members of Congress and whatever had, uh, had those folks' hands in their pockets. And, you know, I, I, think, uh, I, I think it was a missed opportunity for Trump uh, to at least try to do something uh, positive on that issue. All right. So, Jeff, I want you to try to make, you know, make this make sense for our viewers. Just give it to me straight. In 2022, in the midterm elections, do you think that the Republicans will take control of the House or Senate? And I know this is a lot to ask, but in 2024, what's your prediction? Do you think Trump comes back and do you think Trump wins? Well, you uh, you quoted uh, uh, Bill Clinton, and I think it was actually James Carville that came up with the line, it's the economy, stupid. If I want to look at where I think the midterms are going uh, this year, the, the Democrats want to make it about social issues and abortion and Supreme Court nominations and, and all of that. But... I think it's the economy, stupid. And I think if things don't rebound quickly, which I don't foresee, I think the per it's going to be a wave election in the other direction. I think that those votes for Herschel Walker and Dr. Oz are going to break uh, to the right. Now, maybe I'm naive, but that's what I think. In 2024, 
my choice would would not necessarily be Donald Trump. The only two, though, that register in the polls currently uh, on the Republican side are him and Governor DeSantis. Uh, between the two, I think Governor DeSantis would be less divisive. Uh, and, you know, I'm I voted for Trump the second time around, full disclosure, but I got sick of all the gaffes and the tweets and you know, the nasty. Fair, yeah, that's a very fair point. But I, I have to say, I'm going to disagree with you here. I don't think there's going to be a red wave in 2022. I think the Republicans take the House, but the Democrats keep the Senate. And in 2024, I'm going to predict Trump doesn't run, but Ron DeSantis does. But we'll leave it there and we will see you next time. Thank you so much, Jeff. And again, we will see you next time. Thank you. And Jeff, I just want to ask you one more question. I think we're, we all admire Tom Brady and the years of service, in the NFL, and how, how incredibly has been, he has been as a player. My question for you is this. Does Tom Brady play after this year, yes or no? Uh, I think he might. I know uh, there are rumors out there that his wife doesn't support it, but he can still play on a level that, that most quarterbacks in the NFL can't, even 45, 46 years old. Uh, you know, this isn't George Blanda out there. He's running around like a kid. And uh, so I think, I think Brady could continue to play until he's 50 if he wants to. Um, well, once again, I'm going to respectfully disagree. I think this is his last year. I think his wife and his family obligations will influence him to retire, uh, even though he may play many more years, uh, or he could play many more years, but I don't think it's happening. This is the last year for Tom Brady, but we'll leave it there and we will see what happens. All right.